So, back in the day at Boston's, this is what I want to know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of sailcloth did you use? Uh, we used cotton. Which is what? Egyptian Wamsuda and American Flytex. Is that what they called it? Yes. And what were, how wide were the panels? Well, they come in a, I think it was a 36 inch width, but then they put two bites in them, sometimes three bites, which is a just a double, triple overlap. Okay. And what that was for was to get the sail strength so it looked like it had a lot of little panels, but we really only had one 36 inch panel. Oh, okay. <laughs> so what year was this, say? 1953 is when I started. 53? Yeah, and who taught you? Howard Boston. Howard Boston was just Skip's dad, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. How many sales did you cut a week, say? Oh, I don't know. Sometimes we do 40, 50. <laughs> but in the smaller ones. Yeah. The bigger boats, that, you know, you didn't make as many. Yeah. Yeah. But didn't you small, do a lot? The small sales, like uh, snipes, had, like we had uh, Chris Craft made a little di a little uh, dinghy sail or seashell they call it. Oh yeah. And uh, it was only like an eight foot long, and we used to have a pattern for that. We could probably cut out a hundred a day on that thing. A hundred? Oh yeah. <laughs> that was just cutting. Yeah. So how many women were sewing back then? Oh, in Boston's? Let me see. Probably five or six. Sewing so operators? Yeah. Yes. Then they had four guys used to do all the hand sewing downstairs. Four guys? Yeah. Yeah. They would do all the hand sewing. A lot of hand work on the sales years ago. Yeah. Not like today. They used to hand sew the ropes to the luff of the sail, the foot of the sail. So you guys, had, they had to hand sew the rope all the way down the left of the sail. And the foot. Oh yeah. yeah. Correct. <laughs> so did they get the Egyptian sailcloth? It must have came from Egypt, didn't it? Well, they got his name from that because the, the, the Egyptian cotton came from when the Nile River flooded. Yeah. On the color of the Nile River. And Which they, is what, it, like it's tan? Sort of an ecru color, like a tan color. Yeah. Correct. And that's why they called it that? Correct. Okay, wing it. And then, <laughs> and then uh, uh, we used to cut the sails off a blueprint. Uh, Howard Boston would lay on us a plan, uh -huh. and he'd have all the dimension on every panel. And then he had the luff angle, so we had to take the, the it was about a, three by 24 inch uh, drawing and we would take that and hold it on the, the square yeah. of the cloth and then we get the luff angle and we put marks on it and then draw a line. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of work. It was. They didn't have no seam stick back then, right? No. Didn't you have to like match mark all the seams? Right. We match mark all the seams and uh, they had to follow lines and sew them together, I imagine. Correct. Yeah. Uh, some of the gals were real good at it, and others weren't so good. <laughs> What'd you do, fire them? <laughs> kind of got rid of them. Every six inches. Match mark all the sails, every six every inches. Every six inches, correct. Yeah. And all the panels. And then they, the girls would put them together, sew them, and then we would scribe them after. I mean, so, the edges. Correct. Yeah. And we always left a little bit on the edges for uh, tabling. Yeah. Uh, the luff was usually a three to four inch that you'd wrap around a rope sometimes. Or, oh, okay. Or, or you would table it too. But uh, a lot of the le least expensive sales sometimes they would do what they call a machine rope. In other words, they'd lay the rope on the inside of the cloth and over roll around it. Uh huh. And then uh, after, uh, the guys downstairs would take that uh, uh, rope and tighten it up to the right tension so that when you hoist it, you couldn't over hoist it. Oh, okay. You know, and stretch the sail out of shape. Is that what those wires were for? Check wires. Yeah. yeah. I used to have those in DN sales, I yeah. remember.